Oh, go ahead, Aaron. I was just going to mention when the original question of how we know evolution is true and versus the people that are arguing that it's not, and we mentioned the difference between micro and macro evolution. Uh, it, one interesting thing about the critics of evolution is that macro evolution, I've, I've found every educational institution I could that where I could find a definition of the two, uh, it says that macroevolution begins with speciation, that it's variation at or above the species level, including the evolution of new species. So speciation then is part of macroevolution. And the interesting thing is, is that creationists commonly now, where they didn't when I was a kid, everybody wanted to deny, they, they deny that speciation is possible until they realize that they can't make the Noah's Ark story work without it. And uh, they, they can't admit uh, that, that Lacan Pictus is different species than than um, uh, Canis lupus familiaris. You know, I mean, there's dogs and African wild dogs. They have to be the same species, even if they can't breed. So they have to come up with this kind of concept. So the evolution deniers fully accept now speciation. And then they try to say that that's not macro, but it is macro. And it's macro by definition, though they can, they're can they never allowed to admit that. And the interesting thing is, is that they say that they accept microevolution, but they don't accept macroevolution. However, they don't accept mutation as a mechanism. They just insist that, that's, that, that all of the potential variety of a species is already written into the gene code, that there can't be any new variation. They don't accept what has been well-established and verified that mutation is the source of new information in the genome. So li literally, they don't accept microevolution. They're fully on board with macroevolution, but they don't accept micro. If I could add to that really quickly, if I have enough energy to entertain those people and <laughs> micro, <laughs> macro, making those distinctions, I do like to bring up uh, the case that in uh, 1971 when um, biologists transplant, transplanted 10 Italian wall lizards from one island off the coast of Croatia to another island. Um, so I just imagine like these Italian lizards being like, hey, you're moving me. Like, don't don't take me. You know? <laughs> but they're being moved, right? So they went back uh, to check on them like 30 years later. And the immigrant lizards' descendants had undergone like some fundamental changes. The original lizards were actually insect eaters, mainly insect eaters. So they were placed on an island where there was an abundance of plants. Plants. So they had to, you know, adapt to that. And their digestive systems had changed to accommodate that. They developed muscles between their large and small intestines that effectively like created these fermenting chambers that allowed them to digest vegetation. And their heads became wider and longer to allow them to better bite and chew the grasses and leaves that they were now that they now had to eat. And this was only after 30 years. If you like come back you know, 3 million years later, you probably won't have lizards anymore. <laughs>